Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Cup of Joe. Hopefully you're wide awake and going this morning already. Today, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 15. But before we do that, I wanted to show you guys a little tool. Um, I often show you some different tools like that, uh, like this. This is the New Believers Bible, uh, the New Believers Bible by Zondervan. And it's the first steps for new Christians. Okay, this is the New Living, New Believers Bible, actual Tyndale, yeah, Tyndale, not Zondervan. And um, what I want to show you in it is uh, maybe you've had someone who's become a Christian and you've not really known how to navigate or help them with the Bible. This Bible is a great tool because uh, it has these introductory chapters in it on how can you know God, what is missing in our lives, and it kind of has a really cool explanation there. And so if you were to buy two of these Bibles, one for yourself and one for the person who's become a new Christian, you're able to meet with them for coffee and kind of go over these, you know. And it kind of talks about, you know, what's the problem there. Specifically, we have missed the mark. Um, sin is a deliberate act. Uh, but then down here on the other side, it says the solution is Jesus and uh, takes you through um, why Jesus bridges the gap between our sin and God, um, uh, how we put Jesus on the cross, his demonstration of love, um, the response is accepting God's offer, what it means, what salvation means. And so it just has some wonderful uh, topics that you're able to walk someone who's new to the Lord through over coffee. So if you're wanting a really cool tool uh, buy two of these and start praying for who God might be using you to help come to him. And as they come to him uh, and become a Christ follower, you're able to give them a Bible as a gift and then be able to meet with them regularly to talk through uh, uh, this first introductory section here in the Bible uh, that leads up uh, to Genesis and the entire Bible. All right. Well, hey, hopefully you enjoy that uh, as a tool. And you can jump on Amazon and uh, purchase uh, a couple of these yourself and um, begin praying. Amen. Well, hey, we're in uh, Proverbs chapter 15 today. If you'll open your Bibles or, or your phone there and follow with me in verse one, it says, A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. Um, I could just talk about that for quite a while and, you know, talking about our tones with one another. If you are married, uh, I'm sure um, whenever you talk much uh, gentler uh, to your spouse, things go better. Um, but when you maybe have an attitude or a certain specific tone that has a harshness to it, uh, it makes tempers flare, the passage says there, right? So we know a fruit of the Spirit from Galatians is gentleness. So we'll pray for the fruit of the Spirit today as we do most days. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Gentle words, here we go again, gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Only fools despise a parent's discipline. Whoever learns from correction is wise. There is treasure in the house of the godly, but the earnings of the wicked bring trouble. The lips of the wise give good advice. The heart of a fool has none to give. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but he delights in the prayers of the upright. The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue godliness. We're doing that this morning, pursuing godliness by spending time with him in his word. Amen. Whoever, verse 10, abandons the right path will be severely disciplined. Whoever hates correction will die. Even death and destruction hold no secrets from the Lord. How much more does he know the human heart? Mockers hate to be corrected, so they stay away from the wise. A glad heart makes a happy face. A broken heart crushes the spirit. A wise person is hungry for knowledge, while the fool feeds on trash. 
For the despondent every day brings trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continual feast. And I'm going to stop on verse 16 today, which says, Better to have little, better to have little with fear of the Lord, reverent awe of God, than to have great treasure, have all the money in the world, and have inner turmoil. Amen? We want to have peace, right? The peace of God that passes all understanding that will guard our hearts and minds, as Philippians tells us. Amen? Well, hey, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We do pray for that fruit of the Spirit today, gentleness. We pray for all the fruit of the Spirit, Lord God, that you would fill us with your Spirit today, that they all may be evident, Lord, that would help others, make others, lead others to inquire of what's different about us, and we might have that opportunity to share you, Jesus, with them. Lord, we do pray for uh, the opportunity to help someone come to know you as Lord and Savior, Um, that we would maybe use a tool like this New Believer Bible, that we in faith would buy a couple and believe for you, Lord, to help us be integral in someone coming to know you, and then we meet for coffee with them and help them with their, their next steps as a disciple. We pray for that, Lord. Be with us today. Your word be a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We love you, Lord. Fill us with faith, with courage and hope, Lord. And may we just bring light, may we be light bringers today into this dark world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, so good being with you guys. Sure love you and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.